I started learning React about five years ago, and since then I've probably used this command upwards of 100 times. But since Create React App has been deprecated, I want to showcase my preferred way of creating, building, and deploying single page React applications. Now, I actually don't think that building and deploying React applications is really that complicated. Um, I think it is overcomplicated by a lot of developers, but in, in reality, all you have is like you have an application and then you have some build command, which uses a build tool. And then that build tool takes your entire project and bundles it into some JavaScript files. Those JavaScript files are referenced by an HTML file, which kind of looks like this, a really basic HTML file with a path to your project, which is just a bundled version of your entire project in a single JS file. Sometimes there's multiple files. Um, and then these files, which we call assets, they get stored somewhere. And they're stored somewhere. They're stored in servers that are sitting all around the world, depending on how you deploy it. And then you have a browser, which goes to your domain, which goes to the DNS, and then it has some routing logic, which ultimately ends up on a server being routed to a CDN, or you know, like if maybe you have your file directly on a, on a server, and then it's going back to your browser. The HTML page hits your browser. Your browser then says, hey, I need some JavaScript to run this application. Then it goes back to your storage, and it gets your bundled React application that hits your browser. It loads, and then boom, your application's working. And this happens actually pretty quickly. So I don't think this process is what's super like complicated. I just think it's like the sheer amount of choices that we have as developers, you know, like, if you're within the AWS ecosystem, it's like, oh, do I put it in S3 and use CloudFront? Or do I use Netlify because it's really tried and true? You know, Vercel is obviously like a really big player in this space. GitHub Pages has been kind of popular for a long time because it's free. You know, a lot of people have their own like applications and servers that are running on VPSs. So like sometimes maybe you'll just stick it in a folder on that VPS and you'll serve it via your, your VPS. Like there's really no right way of doing it, but I do have a preferred way of doing it. And I kind of want to showcase how I do that today. Um, so before we get into it, I just want to show what the end product's going to be really quick. So essentially, we have a really sleek dashboard that's built on top of Shad CN. We're going to be implementing Tanstack Router for page navigation and for our routing framework. We'll be using Tanstack Query to query data behind an API. And that API is going to be built upon TRPC. That way, we can have type-safe communication between our front end and our back end. And if you're new to, to full stack development, you don't really know what these technologies are, that's OK, because the first several minutes of this video, we're going to start from scratch. We're going to run a few commands to build this project. We're going to deploy it. We're going to put our own domain name behind it. And then from there, we're going to build upon that you know, blank canvas of a React application and showcase how you can build really sophisticated applications that aren't as complicated as you would initially think. So let's get into it. If you head over to the Cloudflare documentation for workers, there's a section called Framework Guides. We're going to go ahead and find React. And then you can see that there's some basic instructions on how to get set up. The only thing we really care about here is this Create Cloudflare Latest command, where you specify the framework and the platform that it runs on. I'm going to copy this and head over to a terminal and run it. As this is running, you're going to see that there's some prompts that it wants you to select before it continues the full build. I'm going to go ahead and say TypeScript with SWC, which stands for Speedy Web Compiler. I'm already using Git in my project, so I'm going to go ahead and say no. And then you can deploy your application right away. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say no because I want to show you how you can iteratively deploy your application as you're building your project. OK, so from here, you can see that we have an application called My React App, which is specified by this name that's passed in. So obviously, if you want your, your project to be called something different, go ahead and change the name here. So we'll CD into that, and I'm going to open it into an editor. So to get started working in this application, let's go head over to our package.json file. Here you can see we have some scripts that we care about. We have dev, we have build, and we have deploy. I'm going to go ahead and run the dev script. And this is going to spin our application up on port 5174. We'll head over to our browser, and you can see that we have our application running here. I'm going to kill this application, and then I'm going to deploy it. So npm run deploy. Now, before you do this, you need to create a Cloudflare account, and it will go through this process of building and packaging your application, uploading it to Cloudflare CDN, and then it will give you a publicly available URL that you can view to actually use. So you can see this is our URL right here. We'll head over to our browser. We'll load that page. So from here, you have a free domain that you know is a domain that's owned by Cloudflare under the workers.dev domain, where you can view your site, test it, use it. And then, most importantly, what we can do is if you have your own domain that's living on Cloudflare, you can add that domain to your routes, and you can add a subdomain if you want. So this is react at backpine.com. This is a domain that I own, and it's currently on my Cloudflare account. You can deploy that again. And then this is going to go through that exact same build and deploy process where it uploads the application. But this time, it's going to be publicly accessible on our own domain. So we'll head on over to here. And you can see at react.backpine.com, we have this exact same site. So building and deploying this application, it's very simple. Um, there's really not a lot to it. I, I find the method of building and shipping Cloudflare sites really simple, especially if you follow their documentation. But you know, this guide should be perfect if you're just starting out, because from here, you can head over to your app.ts file. You can start modifying stuff. You can start learning about 
use state, use effect, um, you can build out whatever application you want, and you can actually make it publicly accessible so you can share that with other people. So great for beginners, but if you're a bit more experienced in the web development space and you know what you're doing and you want to build something more sophisticated, this method of deploying with this template gives you the ability to build really robust applications. So we're going to go through an example of that now. So if we head back over to our application that's running locally, you may have noticed that there's this button that says name from API. If we go to inspect and we go to network and we click that API, you can see that there's this API request that's being made and it's actually being made at, this same, at the same host that our application is currently running on. This template ships with an API that runs alongside your React application and it deploys with that API as well. Right now that API doesn't do much, it just returns name Cloudflare and it populates that name inside of here. But I can show you how you can modify the entry point for this API to build really extensive and really robust applications. So if you head over to this worker folder, you're gonna notice, you're not gonna see Hona or anything, you're gonna see there's this index.ts file and there's this fetch handler, which takes in a request. It looks for the path API, and if it is the path API, it returns Cloudflare. Now, I mean, this is just really boilerplate stuff. Um, it just gives you a, a super basic entry point for an API. But what you can do, and what I've done, is I have added this Hono folder, which is which Hono is just this, um, it's an express-like API framework where you can build out different routes to handle logic when you receive a request, and you can return like text or JSON or HTML if you want. Um, it's a great a great way to build APIs, in my opinion. It's a lightweight, fast framework. So super basic, um, get endpoint at that forward slash API. And then what I'm going to do is instead of using this um, default fetch that um, is looking for the path, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to import app from the Hono API. And then I'm going to have my fetch and I've added an EMV in a context, which are props that are passed into the fetch handler by Cloudflare's runtime. EMV gives you access to like variables, secrets, if you have a database or um, key value or R2 bucket associated with your project, it'll be available within EMB. And context gives you the ability to run code after the request has been served. Um, we're not gonna get too deep into that, but it's a pretty cool thing. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say app, which is from Hono, dot fetch, the fetch handler, and I'm gonna pass in the request and the EMB and the context. And you can see now that this fetch request is now saying name Cloudflare with Hono. Go ahead, hit this button. Now you see that we're getting this Cloudflare with Hono in our UI. And that response is now being routed to our Hono API. So before we move to TanStack and TRPC, I just want to note one thing really quick. Notice that we have this console log in our worker. When we hit this endpoint from our code within our application, the logs show up on the back end, and we can tell that our worker is being invoked. But if we head to our, our domain forward slash API, which is the exact same path that's being hit with this API call here, notice that it's actually pulling the static asset, our React app. We don't have any routes here yet, but it's actually not going to our worker. This might be a little bit confusing if you're coming from you know a traditional software engineering background, where you're building out APIs and like a get request is a get request. But if you call this fetch request within the console, head over to the network, notice that it is actually making it to our worker. We're getting the JSON response back. And even if you were to grab this as a curl, the curl is also going directly to our API. So what's happening here? This application is configured in a way that essentially tells Cloudflare to apply some conditional routing logic based upon headers of the request. If you're accessing the website via the browser through just normal page navigation, the browser is going to apply some additional headers about your client, the type of device, and other things that Cloudflare is able to use to basically route that request directly to static assets that are hosted all around the world, making the page load speed really fast for your users. Now, if you make a traditional API request from the fetch function within your code, the browser is also applying some headers that Cloudflare is able to use to route that to the worker to execute some server-side code. This way, all requests don't have to go to a worker, go through a whole bunch of parsing logic until finally it has a fallback of going to the assets. It makes the page load time just that much faster and it's a really cool feature that Cloudflare's kind of abstracted away from us that we really don't have to worry about. Okay, so now let's get to the fun stuff. I want to showcase that the application is currently in a state that we can build upon it in any direction that we want. TanStack Router is super popular and I think it's really great to work with. So we're going to implement TanStack Router so we can have file-based navigation within our, in, within our application. We're also going to implement Shad CN so we can have a beautiful UI. We're going to have TRPC on the back end within our worker. So you can clearly see that, you know, you don't just have to use just a normal Hono API. You, you can implement type safe RPC calls. And then we're going to use TanStack Query to query this data. Now, I'm going to cook through this really, really quick, but I'll also link the documentation for all the steps, and I'll have the Git repo in, in the description below. Okay, so the first thing I've done here is I've gone through the instructions on TanStack Router. I've downloaded all of the dependencies, updated my Vite config to essentially have the TanStack Router Vite plugin, which is really cool. We'll get to that in a second. I've added some routes inside of my project, and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So in my project, we'll head over to the, the beat config. You can see that I have the TanStack Router configured, and then I have these routes in my project. So we'll have, we have about here. So you can see that we have about here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be called contact. And this is one of the cool things about that V plugin is when you create that folder, it automatically gives you this boilerplate code. So now we can head over here. 
and we go to contact and now we're at that contact page. So this is how you can implement super basic but really robust file based routing within your application. So the next thing that I set up for this project with ShadCN is just as a great component library for, be for a beautiful UI. I followed the Vite instructions, which gives you some different dependencies to install, some configs to update. And then the very last step is you install a button and then use it in your project to make sure everything's working as expected. The next thing that I did is I went over to Blocks, and they have some example UIs that are built out with different Shad components. And, you know, the featured one is beautiful. It's like this beautiful dashboard. So what I did is I clicked on this guy right here, which gives you a command, well, which gives you an NPX command that installs all of the components that are needed for this dashboard. When this got done, when this finished installing, I went over the code, and then I copied this entire block, and I put it, and I put it inside the index.ts file. And then you head over to your home page and you have this beautiful interactive dashboard. The next thing I did in this project is I implemented TRPC. I did so by just basically taking a look at this dashboard and I noticed how there's dummy data that's coming through this JSON file that's hard coded in the project. So I thought a really great example of how to use TRPC within this project would be to take all the data here, stick it statically behind a TRPC route or a, T a TRPC method, and then implement use query from TANStack to pull that data from a TRPC method within our API or within our, within our worker, and then use it within this table. So I'll show you how to do that right now. I read through the basic quick start for TRPC just to get TRPC working on the server side and the client side. Um, there's a few different caveats that you have to consider when you're actually implementing this on a Cloudflare worker that I'll walk through really quick. But ultimately, TRPC, you, with TRPC, you, you create an instance of TRPC and then you use it throughout your project. So you define a router. Um, a router can have some different ways of handling queries. So you can see like user list is a public procedure, takes a query, that query is querying a database and then it's returning the user's object. We're kind of doing something similar with dummy data inside of our project. So. The very first thing that I did is in, in our workers, there's this TRPC folder. I created this file called context, and this context is just allowing us to pass information from our Cloudflare worker so it can be used inside of TRPC. So this information is going to be coming from Cloudflare, and I'll show you how to implement that in a second. And then I have this context type. Um, this context type is going to be used in our TRPC instance, and it's defined with this T. This is just the semantics that I saw on their website. Um, I created this TRPC route called get table data. Um, all it's doing is it's taking in the input of table ID, which is the dummy ID for now. And then it is um, returning dummy data from our project, just, um, you know, so, so the hard-coded data um, that I got from that table data from the Shad CN component. Now, obviously, you know, a real case scenario in this um, in this section, you would be taking the input, then you'd be querying a database or going to an API, and you'd be grabbing some data, and then you'd be passing it back to the client. But for this use case, um, for this use case, it's super simple. It's just kind of passing through dummy data back to the client. So this is our route, just one for now. And then you could build out a whole bunch of different procedures in here. Um, you could build out mutations if you're going to be modifying data on your backend. And then um, you could create more routes in this routes folder as well. Um, the very next, the, the last thing here that I've done is inside of this uh, index.ts file, this is our worker entry point. Essentially what I've done is I've said, if our path name is trpc, then what we're going to do is we're going to use this fetch, fetch request handler from the trpc adapters. And you can see that we're specifying an endpoint. We're passing in the request that's coming from um, Cloudflare. And then we're creating this context. And this context is that method that we defined before where we're basically telling TRPC, or we're basically passing in different information that's going from our worker to TRPC so we can use it um, in our TRPC methods. So we're passing in the context, the request, the EMV, all this information into here. Um, and then we have access to it inside of our routes. We're able to basically say like, from here we could basically say, I want it to go CTX and then CTX now has the EMV from Cloudflare. It has the worker context. Um, it should also have access to the request and has access to that request. So, you know, like you can, you can imagine if you have a whole bunch of information that the worker's being, that the worker's using on the backend, you can actually propagate that information through into TRPC. Now, the very last thing that I've done in this project is I've implemented the TANSTAT query. So Tans, there's a lot, there's a lot of different like examples of TANSTAT query, but the best one that I found for TRPC is this on their website, they have some examples of how they specifically set up TANSTAT query to be used with um, TRPC. So I followed the instructions here and I'll just kind of walk you through what I've done in the code. Um, very first thing is in the, uh, very first thing that I did is I created this router.tsx where I implemented the app router from my worker, which is, which basically gets all the types from all of the TANSTAT routes that I've defined, or not the TANSTAT routes, for the TRPC routes that I've defined. Um, then you create this instance of TRPC. This, this instance of TRPC is gonna be used on the client, so within the React application. Um, then you create this. Uh, then you create this router. This router um, gets declared here, so that it can be used throughout the project. And then inside of main, really the only different, only the difference here is um, I'm importing router from this router file that I I'm importing create router from this router file um, that I just barely created. And then this router is going to be passed into the router provider, which is uh, created by um, Tanstack. And I know like 
if you're not familiar with this, this is like way too fast. Uh, but I just kind of want to illustrate how to use tans how to use Tanstack query because it is super cool. Like there, I, I can't believe I haven't been doing this like earlier. This is something that I like started working with the last like three or four months, and I really like this is like by far the best way to interact with data behind an API within your UI. It's really cool. So um, the way that this is being used is we'll go into our index.tsx file, and you can see that we're implementing trpc from our from our router, which is inside of our React application. And then we're implementing, we're, we're importing use query from Tanstack uh, React query. Now, you can imagine like, um, you know, in the past, if you want to call an API, like you'll do something like, you'll do something like this where like you have use effect and then you'll have some like logic where you, you know, call a method that's calling an API, then you're getting that data, then you're saving that data to state. And then like, you know, you're keeping track of like, is it loading and stuff? And I mean, this is a really antiquated way of doing it, to be honest. And it's crazy how like, how this is still like a pattern that's like applied across tons of different projects where essentially like use query is doing that for us. It's a hook that's managing the lifecycle of that request. And essentially all you're doing is like you're implementing use query. And then we have this TRPC example table data get table data. And what's really cool is like you can you, you can, can drill into this and this jump to our back end code. And you can see this is our procedure that we've implemented on the back end. And we can jump to it directly from the front end. So like you're able to just navigate your code base really easily. Uh, you grab the query options, um, which is basically just going to allow you to pass in some data that's going to be used for our uh, request to TRPC. So this is has the input of table data. So for this use case, I just have, I'm passing in like example table data because like this is a dummy endpoint. There's really nothing happening here. There's nothing being queried. Um, and essentially when this component mounts, what's going to happen is you have access to a whole bunch of different uh, methods or, or attributes here. The, the main one is data. Like what is returned from the API is data. And then you also have like is error, is loading, all this stuff comes pre-baked for you. So you can use it within your application. You know, you can have some like logic to say, if it's loading, have this loading spinner do something, or if it's an error, do something else. And then once data is available, you can use that data in your project. So you can see what we've done here is like, it's just super basic. We're handling is error. Um, we're handling like is loading here. And then the very last thing is like, okay, so if we have some data, we're going to pass that data into our data table. Now, if we go over here, we'll refresh this page and you can see that this request is going to be made to our backend. So example data, table data, um, get table data. So this is the data that's coming from TRPC on our backend. And then something that's also really cool about Tanstack that just kind of like comes out of the box and all these things you can configure um, within, you know, within, uh, within Tanstack query. But what I have is I have some like logic here that basically gives our code a 50% chance of failing. Um, on the back end. So like basically 50% chance we're going to get an error when, when this function loads. So you can see this just failed, this just failed, but it's retrying. Oh, it just retried again. And now it's 200. Now we got data. Let's let's look at that one more time. We refresh this page. This is like really slow because, okay. So look at that, fail and then succeed. We'll refresh it one more time. Oh, success. It, it succeeded the first time. Let's see if we can illustrate that one more time. It failed and now it succeeded. So basically what's happening is like, I've you know implemented some logic on the back end to say, hey, I'm, I want this uh, query to fail. To illustrate that client side with client side with Tanstack query, essentially like out of the box, it's just going to implement retry logic for you. So like you fetch some data, you know, if like if, if you were going to write this code by yourself, it'd be a lot of code. You basically say like, okay, so if it fed, if it fails and like here's my back off, like I'm going to retry in one second, then I'm going to retry in three seconds. I'm going to kind of have like an expon exponential back off, but it does all that for you. It's really cool. So just like in this little section of code, you have access to so much. So um, this is like really, really powerful. And I think that more people should like really start looking into Tanstack. I'm currently doing a deep dive. So like, let me know if you're, uh, if you want to like deep dive into Tanstack, Tanstack start. If, if you're not familiar with this, like there, there's so much that's going on behind the scenes. Um, and I, I think that like this might overtake next in terms of like popularity in the next couple of years, just because like, it is just so cool. It's so configurable. I feel like I'm not like boxed into a framework and I can really just build whatever I want. There's like this whole different world of how to do server-side rendering, server-side components. Um, with Tanstack and Tanstack start. So I'm diving really deep into that. So expect a video in the near future, um, just like a, a full build out of like something really cool, like illustrating all the features. But for now, you know, right now you, we've been able to illustrate that as a beginner, you can use this template, deploy it to Cloudflare. Um, and then you can like just get rolling really quickly. You can iteratively like build some stuff, deploy, use your own domain, it's all free. But then if you want to build out stuff that's like more robust, it's really up to you. Like there's nothing blocking you from, you know, building whatever you want, building really sophisticated applications because you know, it's just so simple. It gives you the bare bones of a project and then you can extend it however you want. And it really isn't that hard to extend it. So I hope this video helps and maybe can inspire you to like go build something. Like you don't have to necessarily just like create a next app, deploy it to Vercel or, you know, um, like you're, you really, it's up to you. Like like the current state of full stack development is there's so much that can be done. So yeah, I hope this helps. I'm just kind of ranting at this point. Until next time.